Hi, and welcome to Nancy's House. This is Alyssa Lewin. I'm the founder of Nancy's House, and today we're going to be making a Thanksgiving feast for a family of four, quick and easy, with Chef Dan Salva. Hello. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Dan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from? Where you've been working? What's been up? What you do? Sure. Um, I grew up in South Jersey, uh, and I am currently a chef working for Amanda on Main Street, running a culinary training program. That's in Lansdale, right? Lansdale, yep. We uh, we started as a soup kitchen in 1981. Uh, we opened a market at some point. We're now at a fourth location in North Penn Commons, sharing a space for the YMCA, advanced living apartments for fixed income seniors, and the Peak Center, which is a recreational senior center. Uh, we run a cafe. That is a training cafe. We have a Meals on Wheels contract for multiple sites in Montgomery County. And we have an eight-week program, culinary training programs. Um, wow. So multifaceted, uh, nonprofit, food nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, I went to culinary school at the Art Institute of Philadelphia, which is no longer open. Um, but I spent a long time in star restaurants, even star restaurants. And then did a short stint in Italy, followed by a short stint in New York, came back, started working in retail catering at Weaver's Way in Chestnut Hill, um, then worked for Catering by Design in Mount Airy for a little while before volunteering with Bill Abundance in their culinary training program, and ultimately I got recruited by Amanda to do this. Well, so, that's quite a pedigree. Yeah, a long time. I think we've been doing this for about since I was 24. Yeah. So, and I do have to say, I've eaten at some of your restaurants, and it is very delicious. They're food. not, they're not mine, but I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I'm just working. Somebody's there. making the food, and I'm pretty sure it's not Stephen Starr. That's true. That's true. So, today, we are making a Thanksgiving feast for a family of four. We're making a turkey breast, which hopefully you've all. Brine already, dry brines, okay, with mm -hmm. uh, salt, sugar, and herb scrub. And that video, if you haven't done that, if you're catching this um, on, on the recording, the video for the dry rub and the recipe uh, is up on our website. So please go check that out. And it is quite delicious. And then we are also making a stuffing. Well, a dressing, bread not dressing, right. bread dressing. It's not a stuffing because it's not going into a bird. Um, then why don't we put things in the bird anymore? Um, actually, they say it dries out the bird. Um, and really the reason people stop doing it is because traditionally there's sausage uh, in a stuff. And these, by the time the sausage cooks through, the bird is overcooked. Uh -huh. So that is why people stopped doing it initially. And then everyone found out that it's just simpler and easier to do it stovetop and more like a bread crack casserole. Um, and you can just take turkey stock that you've prepared ahead of time or chicken stock and sort of make it as if it were cooked like a bird, but stovetop instead. But quicker and easier and tastier. Correct. Um, thank you. And then we are also doing a quick and easy cranberry sauce. Yes. So the cranberry sauce is, I think, easier than people realize. You, all you have to do is basically simmer cranberries uh, with sugar and some aromatics that we'll, we'll talk about. We'll get up to that in yeah. a minute. Okay. Um, and a little bit of salt. And it, it'll thicken itself because there's pectin in the cranberries. So. You just really reduce it down to the desired thickness and put a little finishing touches on it. And, um, and it's better than out of a can. All right. And then we're doing green beans, almond bean. Correct. Which are very simple. Like uh, a little bit lighter than the traditional green bean casserole with cream of mushroom soup that everybody's used to. Uh -huh. There's enough heavy stuff in this meal that you don't need to add that. So I've always been partial to just some nice fresh, crisp vegetable along with this holiday meal. Um, okay. We'll do a gravy demonstration. And obviously we have a, the other breast in the oven now. So you can see the finished product. Um, and then it's up to you to 
sort of pull this when when it's done. And I'll go into what exactly we're looking for when we uh, when we pull the bird out. You know, it helps to have a meat thermometer, but there are other ways to tell if it's done. Great. So you're going to give us all the tricks. Sure will. Yeah. Okay. So let's get started. All right. All right. So the first thing you're going to do is preheat your oven to. Do we have any participants yet? Okay. You're going to preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Okay. Um, and if you have a convection setting, you might want to go a little bit lower, 350, and turn on the convection oven. Um, roughly, if you have a breast or a whole bird, uh, you can be pretty safe to set a timer for an hour and then start checking. All right. So the bird that we have there is in, and we're just finishing that slowly. Uh, I'll be pulling that out a little bit later uh, for like the final reveal. <laughs> um, but currently we'll put this other breast in, which unfortunately it's the ugly one because we had a little bit of a hard time butchering. But no worries, it's more about, we're gonna slice it before we put it on the plate anyway. So let's get this working, we got it at 350 degrees. All right because it does have a convection setting. Actually, this one only has a lot of higher oven. Right, the lower oven's not convection. That's fine. Wait. Okay. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's the first step. All right, everything else should be able to be done by the time the bird's done. You have to rest the bird before you slice it anyway, so you've got some time there. All right. Um, before we start anything else, I want to go over what you'll need to complete this whole thing. So we'll start with the cranberry sauce. Well, no, why don't I start with what we're starting? Stuffing. Okay. You'll need a cutting board and a knife and a wooden spoon and a wine basin pot and a preheated oven to finish the stuffing. So, um, You'll get all that together before you get going, right? You always want to be prepared uh, before you just start prepping. Okay. So um, the fancy name for that is mise en place. Correct, mise en place, things in place. I gave my husband some basic cooking lessons for his birthday. That's I nice. did the teaching because he oh. is not very handy in the kitchen. And I did one session that was learn a foreign language. Um, part of that was right. mise en place. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just say that that habit can translate to a number of other uh, skills. It's great organization. Yes. Plumbers got to have a mise en place, you know. Um, everything in its right place to start. So, as you can see, all of our equipment is here and ready to go. Um, and that's for the stopping. All right. Um, we can, why don't we make sure you have all of this equipment ready, but we'll go into the specifics of what you need as we do it. So we're ready for the stuffing that's gonna be first. However, why don't we make sure that you have um, a wide pan for the green beans with a lid. And I, I have my almonds ready to go in here so I can toast them and pull them out, but just make sure the equipment is there. All right. Also, we want a medium pot for our cranberries. All right, for our cranberry sauce. And that's what, like a uh, six okay. cup, eight cup, something uh, like that. More than that. Okay. <laughs> it's a medium pot. It's a medium pot. And, you know, you're going to, we don't have exact ratios on everything here. This is, uh, this is home cooking. This is home cooking. <laughs> we don't have to be glued to a recipe to get it done. Um, I like that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You'll need. That's the oven coming up to heat. Mm -hmm. You'll need. Uh, you'll use your spoon for that as well. You can just have the same spoon that you're using. For. Your stuffing, ready to go for your cranberry sauce, just give it a rinse. You don't need to be doing too many dishes. 
All right. Thank you. We all appreciate that. Oh, great. Um, the same knife and cutting board you used for your stuff, stuffing prep, you can use for the green bean on the bean. We do have on your list of things that you should have ready some shallots for that. Okay. Okay. Oh. Now, now, if I don't have shallots, onions are good. Okay. Or you can mix up some garlic too, just a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right. That's our timer for the, the, top oven. the top oven. Why don't we check and see if the bird we got working okay. earlier is done? And if you can hit the timer button on that little. Yep, there we go. You can get it tighter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm looking for 160 or above. So we have a, a question. Uh -huh. uh, are shallots milder than onions? Correct. 160 or above, and that looked like it said 166 to me. Yeah, you're always going to want to look in a couple of different places and take the lowest reading. But I'm going with my intuition saying there's been two places from where at 166, so we're going to pull this out. Uh, you probably want mitts. Nope. Oh my goodness. Oil pans are not conductors of heat so actually okay so this is coming from a chef who handles hot things all the time somebody like me i would want oven mitts okay or towels or towels yes but oh, you're not right about this although i did have this <laughs> i did have this a little bit lower to finish so all right I am okay. going to all right so you can see we got a nice brown skin here that should be nice and crispy. I'm seeing some feathers still in here. Oh, sorry, it's a butcher bird and I didn't get them all out. That's all right. Not too, not too many. No, and they do come out more easily when, it's, when it's cooked. cooked. Right. Yeah. All right, so if you get a kosher bird, just make sure that you look for those before you start slicing this and putting it. Yeah, we don't want to put the feathers on the table. Right. Now the nice thing about the brine is it should make your Meat a little bit more forgiving. That's what I think what we do. And then if you go a little bit, you go a little bit higher on a tent than you intend to, you still have a decently juicy burn if you dry grind it or wet grind. So one of the things I think that's important for the folks who are watching our video is if I'm hearing you correctly, what you're saying is. If you get called away by the person you're taking care of and you don't get the bird out of the oven precisely when that timer goes off, you've got a little leeway on that. Yeah, it gives you some wiggle room. So that's why the grinding process is helpful. It may seem like more work and it is a little bit, but it's, it gives you some margin for error. And it tastes and, good. And I got to tell you, it smells so good in here. Sure does, it's yeah. a shame nobody else can smell this kitchen. True. So the herbs help a lot with that. So we're going to start prepping our um, dressing. Yes, thank you. Bread dressing. So I'm going to get my pan preheating here. Not too high. All right. Probably medium low just to get a pan hot. I'm going to put two okay. tablespoons of butter in. I'm going to keep an eye on that while I prep my vegetables just to make sure that we don't burn the butter. Okay. All right. What if it starts to brown? Oh, tricky. Here, All right. It starts to get too hot. Take it off the heat. Um, and return it to the heat after the surface of the pan is down. Okay. All right. So we washed our vegetables. If you haven't washed them, I suggest you do it. All right. We are going to cut our celery. I usually leave the tip. Intact just to keep it together. Okay, and you're just cutting it in half. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we'll cut it relatively thin. Okay. So I I am just so impressed by how you do that because mm -hmm. I did um actually try this 
at home on my own and um, I did nick a fingernail. Oh no. <laughs> All right, so I'll give a quick uh, rundown on a safe way to do this. And that's mm -hmm. really just to throw your fingers back. It feels awkward at first, but it's worth going slow and do that because eventually it will feel comfortable and it will pay dividends. So just kind of stick your middle knuckle. Okay. Uh, if you're not comfortable doing that, you can pull your hand away from the knife. Um, but I've gotten used to this and it just tends to, helps control the size of it too. So it looks to me like the blade is actually running along your finger. Is yeah. that, oh, look at that, cool. And yeah. this is another one of those places where, you know, those like celery tips that you're not using can go into a bag in the freezer and get used to make a veggie stock. Absolutely, or any stock. Well, yes. You can use that with chicken bones to make a veggie stock or to make a chicken stock. Mm -hmm. There are a number of different ways to use that. Or if I had the, the leftover turkey carcass at the end of this feast, I can throw it in with that to make a turkey soup. Correct. So we want to control our costs. We want to control our waste. And all of that becomes delicious, more food. Yes. Okay. Okay. So now our butter is melting. What? Show me that again. Oh, listen to that sizzle. Yeah. Get our celery in. I'm sweating. So what does that mean? Sweating just means to go on a low heat. So we don't want to we don't want to put color on these vegetables, but we do want them to soften. So what it really just means is to soften vegetables. Okay. Over low heat. Over low heat. Medium low. Yeah. yeah. So they're not sauteing. That's correct. Sauteing should be a high heat. All right. We do our onion. So you do an onion is to see this root here. Uh huh. Cut through the root and down the middle of the root. So you trimmed the end to get the root junk off, but you left, but you left the root itself intact. So it's holding the bottom of the onion together. Correct. And what I think is cool is you have a, a bowl here that you're just using to collect all your trash. That makes it so much more efficient than. Yes, than, than trying to keep going to your trash can. Uh, when I do this at my mother's every year, I'm just sort of taken over on this. Sometimes I just pull her trash can out of the place it lives, mm -hmm. put it right next to me for the, for the bulk of the prep. Yeah. Shout but, out to Mary for the use of your son. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So onions. I'll do one half one way, one half the other, and you can choose. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to come in close here. All right. So you're going to want to protect yourself. You don't want to put your hand back here. All right. You'll put it here. And you just work your knife on horizontal cut. Not through the back. So down as far as that root, but okay. not through it. Got it. All right, you can do it that way. And then, well, let's, keep, let's finish this. Mm -hmm. And then you can come just straight down here. So you've got your horizontal cut, and then you've got the layers of the onion itself, and then your vertical cuts, and basically you've cut it on three planes that way. Yep. So when you slice through your onion, you've already got your little bitty pieces. And would you call that a rough chop? Yeah, small dice. Okay. Actually, no, I wouldn't. I, I'll show you the rough chop, and that's okay. at the end of the onion. Well, actually, so we would call that a dice. Yeah. So when the recipe says dice, that's what I'm doing. Correct. Okay. All right. I don't like wasting anything. So some people are just like tossing this into that chicken stock bag or veggie stock bag that you mentioned earlier. But you want it in the stuffing. I want it in the stuffing. Okay. All right. The other. Okay, so that's one way to do it. The other is. 
Another way is to consider these layers like spokes or consider your knife cuts like spokes on a wheel. So you'll actually cut oh. around inward. And as you get to the edges, you're just you're gonna want to cut inward. And that will still result in a dice. Nice. Okay. I usually do the first method just because getting on that angle while you're cutting around the onion can be a little awkward. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll go in with our onions. Okay. And into the butter and the celery. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, it smells so good. I can't remember if I have any ingredients list, but because so usually the sausage I use the pork sausage that has sage in it, we weren't able to get that for the for in a for kitchen. So I am going to find sage in here. Is that is that something you have? <laughs> um, dried sage. Mm -hmm. I think so. Oh yeah. Uh, under S for sage, it's alphabetical. That is cool. But you know what? There is some fresh sage in the little arrangement that is on the table. Oh, I'm just gonna steal a little bit. I mm -hmm. see it. No, I'm just gonna take a sprig and then pull it out later. I think. Yep. There we go. And so you just put that whole puppy right in there. Mm -hmm. yes, we'll have to remember to pull it out later. If you want to be real rustic, we'll let the guests pull it out. <laughs> Some figure it out for themselves. Right. Okay. Oh, that smells good. All right. So, uh, where are the right here? You always go on two seasoning layers. So we have. Oh, I'm season the vegetables. So that when you take a bite of the vegetable, it actually tastes like itself. More like itself. Okay. If you want, you can use pepper. So here. I just want people to know when you did that, that spout on the salt box was almost totally closed. That was really just a sprinkle. Correct. You did not dump a whole lot of salt into that. No, I did not. So I know you saw the angle of it. Um, yes, I did not do that. I want to control it, so I'm going to like that. <laughs> yeah, that is just barely open. That's, yeah, and people need to remember to do that. Otherwise, that's not going to be pleasant. Why well, she's here. Good for clarifying. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got our vegetables sweating. Uh, in the okay, hang, hang on a minute, because you just spoke to Seth, and I haven't introduced him yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hold on. I don't want Here, to pan too fast. Questions. Yep. This is Seth, also my son. And he's taken, <laughs> Kim says, hi, Seth. <laughs> so yeah, Seth is monitoring questions and taking care of getting people in the room and doing all the right stuff. All right, so let's get, um, let's get our sausage out of its casing. Okay, I'm gonna use two of these links. Okay. So this is sweet Italian sausage. Chicken sausage. Chicken sausage. It is not pork sausage. So what do people, if people use chicken instead of pork, what do they need to know about? Uh, it's not going to have as much fat. Uh -huh. um, and so you'll use extra butter, which I've already accounted for, which <laughs> maybe an extra mm -hmm. half tablespoon of butter. Mm -hmm. Um, but usually you're going to get rendered pork fat soaked into the bread that we're going to be using. Now, for someone like me, mm -hmm. if I wanted to use one of those fancy not meat sausages, could I do that and just you add... one of the new kind of sausages? Yeah. Like the impossible? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that actually is going to be higher in fat than chicken sausage. Really? That'll be closer to, uh... yeah, that'll be closer to. Uh... So I could make it 
a totally vegetarian dressing. Okay. Well, you could do it without meat, without veggie stock. It's just not going to be as um, rich or something. But yeah, if you wanted to use impossible sausage or beyond sausage, they put plenty of fat in there. Mm -hmm. And they put all kinds of oils, coconut oil. So you wouldn't even need to worry about adding more margarine or whatever you use as a vegetarian. Fat. Or oil or whatever. All right. So what are we doing here? We I are, saw that you made like an X across it. It's going to be easier to get one slit down the middle and then a little slit across. And that's really just going to make it easy to get our facing off. Oh, look at that. Easy peasy. All right, we'll get my hands a little yeah. more. And what I love is it took you zero time to deal with the turkey. Mm -hmm. You know, all you had to do was put it into the oven because two days ago when we brined it is when we did all the work. Yes. So that makes today's effort that much easier. Yeah, and there's some other things you could do ahead of time. So you could have diced these vegetables yesterday or the day, even the day that you did the turkey. You could have and just put them aside. You could have, mm -hmm. I'm about to do the bread. Mm -hmm. You could have done that. Um, or if I want to, could I buy cubed, packaged? Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So I can make this pretty low effort. Yes. Yeah, day if you want to break up the workload, sure. I mean, it is overall more efficient to just do it all at once, but if you're concerned about putting this much of a time commitment in the day of, and you want to break up the workload amongst multiple days, you can totally do that. You don't you always have to worry about you know, how much time we have to give the project, right? Yeah. Right. How much time can we block? You know, you know how much like cumulative time versus contiguous time, right? So if you don't have two hours to spend in one day, break it up into two, one hour sections. Or even smaller. Right. Right. So I could do all of what you're doing now. I could do the night before. Yes. And it could sit in the refrigerator and wait to catch up with the bread. Yes. You could you could take the sausage out of the casing well ahead of time. You could do all of your knife work for this entire demonstration, which we'll get into the other dishes. We're gonna have to do a little bit more knife work. I'm just going dish by dish, but you could very easily have um, have some shallots that we're gonna use for the beans, cut and set aside and everything can be, a lot of it can be done ahead of time. So I just want people to know that we have been working on this for 20 minutes now and we already have the bird in the oven cooking and right. we have the basics of our stuffing started. Correct. That's pretty cool for 20 minutes. Not bad, right? And it could have been even faster if we got our vegetables cut ahead of time and everything. Right. All right. So uh, next step is to cut the bread. I don't even worry about like the board having chicken on it. It's all going in the oven. It's all getting cooked through. So, so what you're saying is that whole cross contamination, don't worry about it because the cooking kills everything. Yeah, it's not relevant yet. Get everything to 165 degrees, which will be well ahead of that. We don't have to worry about it. So um can do the bread now. All right, we have like a white Italian loaf here. Uh, any bread is fine. I just kind of like a neutral flavored bread that's gonna soak things up. Okay. Um, to sort of let the other flavors shine through. Right. And because it's a stale Correct. bread, bread. Um, I found it on the re reduced, re I did, reduced for quick sale rack. Right. So just a really large dice. You got a bread knife here. You have a sharp chef knife. That'll work too. What's the difference? Bread knife's got a serration. Gets uh -huh. the crust easier. Nice clean cut. And you could literally, if you wanted to, you could just break this up. Like, in fact, that's what I might do. I might just pull this apart 
after I add a little bit of stuff. So um, okay. I'm gonna get some stock in now. So we're using a box of stock, which people can use because it's quick and easy. Mm -hmm. Or if they've been saving their veggie tidbits for a while, they can probably have a stock on hand that they made, right? Right. So there you go, folks. And I do have some turkey stock set aside that I'm going to use for the gravy later. And you can do that too. And so the turkey stock, go ahead. Kim is asking what's the difference between broth and stock? Um, usually salt. Stock shouldn't have too much salt, or else it's going to have more salt. That's it? Mm -hmm. My knowledge. <laughs> okay. Um, should you know the traditional set like that? That's true for grocery stock versus grocery broth. Mm -hmm. In the culinary school, you'll learn that broth is like a fortified stock. The broth is going to be like further flavored with infusions of different flavors, like herbs and yeah. herbs and spices, and you know, like you'll see on restaurant menus served in a saffron broth or. It probably started as a chicken stock and then there's steep saffron in it and some other stuff. And now it's saffron broth. It used to be a stock, now it's a broth. Mm -hmm. All right, so apples go in this. Okay, Granny Smith apples. I am going to, uh, I learned a while ago to peel the apple so that the skin, if it does overcook, you don't get like long strands, tough skin separated from the flesh. All right, so we have a vegetable peeler here. Yep. You can put it on the board and peel it this way, or you can go right into, your, into our trash bin. Trash bin. Or compost bin if you're composting. Yes. And we have a Granny Smith apple here. Is there a reason you like using Granny Smith? It's nice and tangy. A good tangy contrast to the savory fattiness of the rest of the dish. I'm struggling with this uh, healer here, but there's another one in the drawer in front of you that might be better. Yeah, I'm halfway there. Okay. Oh. Again, cross contamination not an issue. It's all veggies. <laughs> no, there's actually there is actually chicken casing in here. Oh, that's right. You put the sausage casing, but it's all going to be cooked. Yep, you got to cook this to 165 anyway. Okay. Okay. Put around the core. And we really just want to dice these up. No, you're making a good size chunk on those. Mm -hmm. Say a medium dice. Oh, there go the fingertips again. Yeah, it would be great if I cut myself on a live. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. We have our resident nurse present. Oh, good. Taking care. <laughs> All right, and that's what's going right into the pot. Right, I'm not going to do much other than get this all, get some of the broth all kind of soaked into the bread. Okay. Now, how, this is very soon to be going in the oven. How wet does it need to be? Like, um, I put about a half cup or a quarter to a half cup, maybe a third cup of stock in here. Oh, that's don't, all. I don't want it to be too wet. Really don't. Um, if we had cubed this bread up ahead of time mm -hmm. and let the cubes dry out, it may have been a little bit more. But we're not talking one or two cups. We're just saying quarter to half. Well, for this for this batch size, yeah. So this is half a loaf of bread, three stems of celery, an apple, an onion, onion. two links of sausage, which are probably about four ounces total. Of sausage. 
-hmm. Maybe five. I am going to put more stock in. Okay, so we want to put this in the oven, uncover it, and set a timer for about a half hour. Right. We're just going to put it in straight in that pan. Yep. Wow, I don't have to clean up extra dishes. The idea. All right. Just All right. Make sure that you have an oven safe pan. It's not, honestly, it should be fine even if it's Teflon. Just make sure that the handle can handle high heat, um, which this can, but it's metal. So you'll be right. taking it out with a towel. Yeah, this is not that aluminum roaster trick. And notice it's going right into the same oven the turkey is in. I mean, I'm lucky I have two ovens, but not everybody does. Right. All right, so let's get cleaned up and ready for the next task. All right, I am going to rinse and then probably flip this board. All right, the other side's clean for the next thing. Okay. Let's see what the next thing is. Next thing is the cranberry sauce. Okay, cranberry sauce doesn't really need a lot of knife work. What you'll need for this are the cranberries. I've got some of the orange started. Cinnamon stick. Cinnamon stick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cranberries, water, and sugar. Okay. okay. And you can use the same vegetable peeler or I have microplane. I'm going to use a microplane. So if you don't have a microplane, you're going to steep these. Okay. And that's just going to flavor the liquid, right? Yes. Um, or okay, you micro, do have a microplane. I do. So. On the board here. And you're just really not going to want to take anything but the top layer. Okay, as you can see, look, look at this real quick. You can see there's uh, no white here. It's orange and orange. Yeah, you don't want any of the white part. The white part is bitter. So just one swipe and just check and see that you have moved on to the next section of the orange. Don't, don't linger on one piece. One area of orange. That's one swipe and rotate. One swipe and rotate. Got it. Now, if I used the vegetable peeler and had a strip of it, I don't need to like dice it up. I, you don't know. You, you we'll uh, pull it out. If you just did a strip, mm -hmm. you can pull them out at the end with a fork mm -hmm. along with the cinnamon stick. You can dice it and leave it in, or you can just steep it and then pull it out. It'll extract flavor either way. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna use the orange juice too. So I'm gonna cut this in half and just steep it right in there. All right, so I've kind of toasted my cinnamon to take a little bit. We get a little water in here now, and then we'll dump our stuff in. And it looks like somehow I ended up with celery here. I don't think that's going to be good. Yeah, probably not. Okay. So this is one bag worth of, of fresh cranberries and one, or one orange, orange and one cinnamon stick. And in it goes. Okay. And I'm going to then add, I guess I'll get them right Right here. Yes. You can always it's add more sugar later, right? So I've got about a third of a cup here. You may add more later. Okay. But you're kind of out of options if you add too much at first. So, so better to start off light and, and add as you need. Yeah, you'll taste it before you serve it. You need to add more sugar. You can add it to make sure it dissolves in. It's very difficult to overcook this, so you don't have to worry too much. It's nice. All right, okay, start. so we have some time relaxation on the cranberries, and we have some time relaxation on our brined turkey. 
So, you know, when needs take us away from the task, there's wiggle room. Okay. Okay. Did you just turn the heat up on the cranberries? I did just to get the water boiling. All right, so I turned it up just so that I can bring it to a boil or a simmer. Once it reaches the simmer, I'll turn it down to maintain the simmer. <clears throat> we have a question of if you can use an artificial sweetener with the cranberries. You definitely can. I don't, I prefer not to, or, um, and again, if it's a um, dietary need, then you absolutely should. But if you can spare a little sugar, um, a mix is great. There's like a lot of products coming out now that I've found I really like with stevia and sugar in them. Um, and when I say products, I mean like candies and stuff mm -hmm. that people are making. And I've always disliked the taste of artificial sweetener, but I found that the blend really works out for like low calorie and low glycemic. Options. Interesting. So interesting. You have to look out for those sideboards. <laughs> I'm not going to worry too much about this, the uh, <clears throat> seeds personally. All right. But if you want, you could get like a strainer, like a mesh strainer, and do this through that or just through fingertips. I just don't think about it. So I'm squeezing the orange right in. So for those of us who don't have that kind of grip, I like to use a, a fork and sort of squeeze it over yeah, the fork. Rotate it, yep. mm -hmm. All right. All right. So before we have Chris, there is that what you're like? Ah. Yeah, that's the rest. So we're rinsing the wooden spoon that you used for the bread dressing. And now, ta-da, it's ready for the cranberries. All right, that looks like it's getting close to a simmer. So I'll just keep an eye on that. So about how much water is that? I'd say about a half. But you're really just looking to cover. And you need some submerged. Some submerged and some on top. Well, they're floating. So when I say submerged, I just mean enough for them to sort of all get contact with the water. Because the water's boiling water or the simmering water is going to pull out. It's called pectin, which is like an actual thickening agent. So this water is going to end up with like cranberry pectin in it and the cranberry is going to break down and it turns into like a chunky dressing, essentially. So it'll be, it'll be relatively thick once it once all this breaks down. Okay. So we're just going to let that cook. Let it go. Okay. So uh, I'm going to turn this to medium low. Um, standing right next to it. So it's always good to, if you can, be next to the stove and watch what's going on. Okay. Right. And if it gets too active over there, you're just going to turn the heat down. Right. Okay. So we've got our bread dressing going, we've got our turkey going, and now we've got our cranberry sauce going. Right. Um, we want to brown the top of our stuffing. So our turkey should be out beforehand. You have a broiler setting on your oven if you need to. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but if you need to at the end, you want to brown the top of your bread dressing casserole, so to speak, mm -hmm. is what it ends up being. Uh, you can use the low setting on your broiler. Just keep an eye on it. Um, and have some distance between the bread and, and the broiler so it doesn't burn right. instantly. Right. Well, you will want to put it on the top rack. Mm -hmm. You can see the rack in the oven right now is in the middle because that's where the bird is. Mm -hmm. Bird will be out. Bird will be resting. Stuffing will go up around the top. And nice. Nice good presentation, I guess. Okay. This board I'm going to get rid of. We can move on to getting our shallots uh, cut up for the green, green beans. beans. Green beans. No. So before I do that, slivered almonds. All right. And I'm actually going to toast these. Okay. 
Now, if somebody in my family has nut allergies, I don't have to use almonds and it will be just as delicious. Almost. <laughs> Can't say just as. Uh, well, that I would know. be the point of putting it in. <laughs> no. I okay, say, you make a good point. I would say uh, any of this stuff can be left out to preference. So if you don't like oniony flavors, shallots, then don't put those in. Just make a nice salt and pepper sauteed green beans. I'm not using a lot of pepper because I know for a lot of folks, it kind of hits them in the back of the throat, especially uh, they've got, you know, gender mucous membrane, essentially, right? You know, okay. Fancy things aren't always well appreciated. So just put the pepper on the table and uh, people add it if they want. Okay. All right, so I'm going to keep an eye on these. Got them about medium heat. They toast up pretty fast, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. It's going to take like two minutes. There's a question if there's anything that can be used as a replacement and still get the same texture for the nut allergy issue. No, not that I know of. Um, well, I was about to just use other nuts. Uh, if people are allergic to tree nuts. If they're not allergic to tree nuts, they can use pine nuts, um, mm -hmm. which I think are a different. They're actually a seed. Right. So I would look into pine nuts and see what if that. What about cashews? Aren't cashews different? No. Okay. You don't know more than just, I would say this, if you don't know more about the allergy, then it's just a nut allergy, I would err on the, on the safe side. And just say don't. Mm -hmm. You could, you know, in the, in the vein of adding some crispness and sort of staying with that whole casserole theme, you could buy some of those crispy onions mm -hmm. and toss those in at the end. Okay. That might be good. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as nuts go, I'm not aware of anything that's got. Well, that was a fancy move. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely not necessary. definitely a chef move. If you don't have a pencil in your hand, it's an option. But... For some of us. Yeah. For some of us, that would wind up all over my kitchen. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, so don't do anything you're not comfortable with. Um, all right. So let's get our. Okay. So they're very similar to the onion. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just tell you to slice them because I could do them like a real very tiny dice called a brunoise, but I don't think that's necessary for rustic holiday cooking. No, I think just a nice you thin know, slice. Nice thin. Semicircle slice, it's mm -hmm. kind of a pretty thing to have in there. Paper can be very thin and frustrating to get off on, maybe so. So, is it cheating to take off the top layer? Uh, yeah, kind of, but I won't judge anyone. <laughs> you don't have to, you don't have to tell me. And again, if you're, if you're separating out your, you know, compostable, compostable veggies or actually usable veggies, Mm -hmm. scraps um that top layer like, should be nice for a veggie stock so let's go with that sure that works okay and i hear those cranberries bubbling away yeah, it's on, so we're simmering the skins are popping and breaking down yeah and this is going to reduce and thicken yeah and we'll add a pinch of salt at the end to taste too really why do we add salt salt just amplifies all flavors in fact, fun, fun fact or trick in baking, sometimes if you want to amplify what is perceived as sweetness, uh -huh. um, you've done it. could have kept them moving. A few of them went too far, but overall um, looks pretty good. Yeah. You're just going to set them aside. Okay. So you were saying if you want to amplify sweetness. In, in baked goods, you can actually add a little bit of salt. And it will, because if you try to add more sugar to a baked thing, it'll change the composition. It'll actually change the way it bakes up, right? Sugar. There's a chemistry in it. There's a chemistry in it, whereas salt is not going to affect that, but it's just going to affect the flavor. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, so we're going to release pain. This takes you longer, that's okay. If you want to just run your knife through like this, what's called a mince, that's fine too. All right, we just want to get them small so that the flavor gets extracted into the butter. Actually, See how I was like a little worried about how hot my pan is? I just take it off. Okay. Just put it on a burner and it's hot. Easy peasy. All a little bit of butter, another maybe two tablespoons. Okay. And that's already started to melt even off the heat. Right. So Go over the visual heat in there. All right. So we've got that on medium low. Again, we just got it out of the corner of our eye. Bring this over here just to have it ready. Okay, so you're not putting it into the butter yet? No, well, let's put it out. Okay. Getting a lot of reflection from that light. There it is. Okay. 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 And the cranberries are just bubbling away. You can see the water is thickening. Mm -hmm. It's going to continue to. And it does smell very orangey in here at the at the moment. It does. It smells very delicious. All right. Sometimes people put herbs in here. I think a sprig of thyme would actually be pretty tasty in there. Uh, a sprig of rosemary, maybe. Berries. So why don't we just improvise? And um, there's thyme in there. There's not. There's rosemary in the refrigerator if you want it. This is, looks like rosemary to me. Uh, lavender. Ooh. Oh. Oh, this is unsalted creamy You're butter. Always going to want to use unsalted butter cooking so you have more control of how much salt goes in. All right, so our butter is melted. So the shallots are going. So just coming back to that um, rosemary question in the cranberries, if people have extra rosemary left over from having made the, 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 brine, the brine. Throw it in there and could have another layer. That sounds good. I'd be nice too. Thank you, one of those. Mm -hmm. well, it's the same thing. You'll pull it out. After, everything gets pulled out after being steeped. And you don't have to worry about putting it into one of those little infuser bag things. Sorry. You don't have to put it into one of those little infuser bags. You can just throw it right into the pot. Oh, I know you're talking about like cheese flow. Yeah. I, I just throw it in and then pull it up. When okay. when it's done. If it's mm -hmm. good enough for you, that works for me. Mm -hmm. So we've now been a little less than an hour. We've got our turkey and our bread dressing in the oven. We've got our cranberry sauce bubbling away and we are working on those um, green beans. Now, these are fresh green beans and it's a little over a pound. Um, and they're whole, but the tips got you know yep. snipped off. But if I were pressed for time, mm -hmm. is there any reason that I couldn't use frozen green beans? No, you could, and you would just, uh, I'll explain it, you would cook them shorter. So okay. They would, I, I would probably thaw them, mm -hmm. or you could, they come in like a steamer bag, and mm -hmm. just follow the instructions for the microwave, and then you would just sweat, sweat your shallots, do everything that we're doing here, and then just um, take them out already hot, steamed, toss them in here, and, and then just the caught it, just coat it up. Coat it up with the butter and the shallots and everything else. And yeah, that would be a good alternative. What we're going to do with the green beans is we're going to saute them first in the butter and shallots. And then we're going to add water to this pan and cover them so that they steam. Okay. And then we'll um, reduce the water off and add our 
nuts, just toss it all together and wait it. I'm not gonna be able, I do not have a big enough pan to do these, these all uh, in one batch. So I'll probably grab a bowl, do them in batches and then toss everything up. If you have a wider basin pan for this, uh, hopefully you started it up already. Um, but this is this is fine in a pinch. Apologies for adding one more thing to clean here. Well, what if they went into your serving bowl? It's good, but it's very hard. It's very hard to toss something in the serving bowl. Ah, uh, I see. Get to the point of brown butter here. We'll see all the water has cooked off of this. That's cool. So we've got shallots are done. I'm gonna add half of these. So you, know what? you know what? It's a little crowded, but it'll be fine. So what you're saying is really what you want is a single layer across the bottom. Is right. that right? Yeah, single layer. We've got one and a half layers here. Uh, it'll be okay. We're not really trying to brown the green beans at all. Right. right. They're not, we're not trying to get any color on the green beans themselves. So we turn this pan to a steamer thing. All right, I'm going to turn off the heat now and add water. All right, because I do need this water to, to basically steam. come to a simmer. And then just covering it up. Once we See it simmering, it starts to pop on it. So we just put it in a jar. And then once I feel like the green beans have almost cooked all the way through, I'll pull it off and see if I can get that water reduced off of everything before. So let the steam escape is what yeah. you're saying. I want to cook them. We have excess water. We'll let it escape out of steam and then it'll be on the dry pan again. And then we'll put it back into our serving. Okay. All right, so how are we doing here? We're doing great. Let me see what this is turned oh, look into. Look at that, it's gotten really thick. Mm -hmm. So, all that came, so like I said, it's pecked in from the uh, cranberries. Uh huh. And I'm going to let this keep going, actually. I do want the, like, I want these whole cranberries. Honestly, a potato masher, if you want, is good to just really get less texture. So, at this point, it's sort of up to you how much texture you want this condiment to have. You want to have a lot of texture, you, you know. Leave it with whole berries. Leave it with the whole berries, skip the masher or skip the pork, the whisk, mm -hmm. whatever you're going to use to break them up. But I actually like it a little bit. I don't, I don't necessarily want whole berries. Okay. All right. So but we're, we're pulling out the orange. Okay. And that goes into our little trash bin. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm really glad that you've learned to duck under the hood. <laughs> We'll see. I remember this time. <laughs> and if you want a potato masher, it's in the third drawer behind you. Okay. Currently, I'm looking for the other peel. And maybe it disintegrated. I don't know. I thought there was two of them. There were two of them in there. For sure, there were. <laughs> But I'm really surprised at how quickly that has thickened up. Yep. That it's is almost no really easy. You know what we didn't mention, Dan, that we probably should, mm -hmm. is that lovely bread dressing that you've got in the oven mm -hmm. is your mom's recipe. It is, yes, that's true. Huh? I thought we did say that, but I, did, I don't know. It's a, I thought about the sausage. Mm. That's sort of her trick. It's whatever her signature trick is, the apple of the sausage. I'm sure she'll be happy to hear. <laughs> Let me use that. I'm going to take a look at this bird. I know okay. it's starting to brown really nicely. Ooh, look at this. Oh, that smells so good. I won't even eat it. It smells so good. Yeah, we're close. If you look, 148, 150. Move it around a little bit and we want put it, it deeper. 165 or better, right? 160 or higher. 160. I think we're there. That's quick. Okay, so you're 
poking at it with your finger. What are you doing? I'm looking for firmness. That's just some solid habit. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take it out. It'll rest up five or 10 degrees. That's why it's like safe to eat at 165, but it's gonna rest up. What's that mean? It means it's gonna continue to carry over cook. Right now, the rib cage is hot. And that rib cage is gonna have any heat into the meat. Mm -hmm. We got two turkey breasts now. It's faster than I expected. We're in about an ounce. Yep, just exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, there we go. Okay. Okay, so at the one hour mark. At the one hour mark, this is pretty much done. Let me see. Ooh, when it, that. As it cools down, you're not going to serve it piping 190 degrees hot. Mm -hmm. So you'll serve it at like room temperature and it's going to be even tighter when it goes down. You know, it'll be mm -hmm. even thicker, closer to what comes out of the can. Sort of mm -hmm. like better jelly consistency. I am going to just take a fork and kind of mash these berries against the side. Mm -hmm. I just want to get a little less texture. Whole berries are still going to be a little sour, mm -hmm. right? So you kind of want like a homogenous, sweet, sour, sweet and sour uh, yeah. dressing. So you have the sugar in the sauce. Oh, there's that other orange piece. Yeah. You have the sugar in the sauce and then the tangy of the berry. Right. And you want them to sort of blend. Right. Oh, and again, smells so good. What's the perfect question for green? So we got that nice vibrant green color. That's a good oh, sign. Beautiful. Not necessarily indicative of them being done. The only way you can plug it. Oh, sorry about that. The only way you can tell that they're done is to taste one and to feel it. I can tell by feeling these with the fork that they are a little too firm still. Mm -hmm. So we will. So they're they're still crunchy. It's what still you're saying. Too okay. Back to about medium. Okay, and you have the a lid jar. cracked a little bit. I looked at how much water was left. Mm -hmm. I'm estimating at this point that we're not gonna be fully evaporated before we're done. So I'll just kind of make that process happen at the same time by keeping it in jar. Okay. Now, coming back to our turkey breasts here, how long do they need to sit? Uh, these are still on the rib cage. And mm -hmm. for that reason, they'll have to rest actually a lot longer than they would if they were off the If it were a boneless breast. Boneless breast. Uh -huh. um, so a boneless breast would probably only be about five to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Bone on is gonna be like 15 at least. 15 to 20. You're gonna have to be able to handle it. And why do you want it to rest? Um, to allow it to come fully up to the temperature that it is going to finish at. Right? Mm -hmm. B, you need to be able to handle it. So you slice um and see you're gonna get a lot more juice run out if you were like if you were to pull it out and it's at 160 165 degrees mm -hmm. and you just cut right into it mm -hmm. the juice is just gonna run right out and then you're burning more dry to eat it but if you let it rest the juices all sort of redistribute and like calm down <laughs> um and we like calm birds right we want it to be tough when we cut into it so okay I had no idea that it did that. Tasting this, mm -hmm. a little bit sour for my taste. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna add more sugar. All right, and this you'll just do to taste. I'm adding about two tablespoons here. Okay, fork. Dissolve that in. Take it back on that spoon, my lens. Because you tasted it with the front end the last time. Right. So this time we use the back end, no, no double, double dipping. dipping. <laughs> no double dipping. All right. So that is good. Um, okay. But I can still taste the granulas. You now it's still granulated right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to let that dissolve, put the low heat back on. And let it melt the sugar. Great. <laughs> All right. We are back to checking. 
checking our inmates. Mm. Perfect. Yeah. All right, so for taking care of people who have to be careful with salt, we're gonna be careful with salt now. I personally don't have to do that yet, so I'm gonna have more salt. <laughs> All right. Now I can hear just the littlest bit of crunch from that bean. It sounds right, perfect. From all the way here. It sounds perfect. All right. So again, small, small opening. Very small opening. Just a sprinkle of salt. Honestly, if you guys have salt shakers to use while you cook, that's probably the best way to control mm -hmm. your salt. Just take one of your salt shakers and you know, just one that you're used to using at the table, perfectly mm -hmm. good to use while you're cooking. But I always do salt while I'm cooking. We want to add some. There's a big difference to having salt on the exterior of food and then, you know, at the table, and then yeah. to have it in the food because it's been cooked with salt. Oh. So people will say, well, you know, you add salt later. That's like only half true because it does taste different. So the beans actually absorb right. some of it with the water. Right. Okay. So these are good, but I'm going to just turn this up on high, boil the rest of this water off, or at least boil most of it off, so mm -hmm. that we don't have a big pool of water in the surface. Right. How many people we have now? Uh, <clears throat> okay, great. Okay. So as, as we have things going here, it, it just looks, I am truly surprised at how easy it is to get everything simultaneously done. Yeah, it actually timed up really well. Um, I think <laughs> slowing me down with having to explain actually kind of helped out <laughs> at all. Oh, and there's our beautiful bread dressing. Look at that. I'm going to actually see if this is the temperature I want. Looks like I said, we didn't have to worry about cross contamination. Mm -hmm. it means we have to actually make sure that things got to proper temp. Good. Like, so I'm checking, I'm seeing, but. Um, so it should be soft. Right. My apples are soft. And so I really wanted to make sure that the apples aren't so crunchy. And I am at 166 and rising. So I am good here. Excellent. And that really does look beautiful and smells so good. And this is the moment that I removed <laughs> my sage. Our sprig. Right. And I think I have another one in here too. I don't want to disturb it too much. So mm -hmm. if a lucky winner gets the spray of well it's like king cake right right, right. exactly i found it uh, you win uh, be careful <laughs> i almost touched the top oh top. yes hot hot right, so this is done this is done okay is done. so our berry sauce beautiful and our bread dressing Oh my goodness. And perfect green beans. All right. Being fancy now. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, so now if I wanted to, if I were concerned about nuts, at this point, those would be done, right? Right. So I'll. You can see the water is almost on. Like, I can see steam is really steam coming up. Off. There's only a little bit of water seeping through the air. Really, all the water at the time. Okay. And we want to keep a close eye so that they don't burn onto the pan. Right. I I have at least another thirty seconds to get worry about that. So at this point, I'm standing over this thing. Mm -hmm. so okay. I've got high heat here. So yep. Expedite that boiling process. 
And just so people know, this has been exactly an hour and 10 minutes. A long 10. An hour and 10 minutes. And as you said, we slowed down because I made you explain things. All right. There's really not all that much prep to do. You know, we, we cut stuff with onion, we cut some celery up, some bread, mm -hmm. some shallots. But really, you know, a lot of the difficult work was done ahead of time with riding that bird. And if people look at the brining tape, you'll see that only took 20 minutes itself. So, okay, and that flame is still up. Ooh, look at this. Mm -mm. Okay. So we'll get some foil on that. The only thing I want to do is I need to find something to put this in when we go to the table. Okay. I haven't thought of that yet, but I think I know what it is. Okay. Let me go ahead and carve the bird that we took out earlier. I do. You want a cutting board that has a trough on it? Actually, this one does. Okay. Whoops. Okay. The only thing, the only thing I'll say is I don't have. Didn't think of this yet. And you don't have to do it. You, you know, you can have a beautiful table setting or you can put it right back in the foil pan. You know, it's, it's up to you. But I haven't picked out a platter for our, uh, our bird yet. <laughs> so Seth is going to do that for us. And I almost forgot since we have, we timed up pretty well here. Mm -hmm. And also do a quick dress. And this is that. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. That beautiful brown rind turkey breast. All right, so I'll get this all set up. But I almost forgot. Before we do that, I think. I want to do a gravy. Okay. And it's going to be very simple gravy. Nothing crazy. Or gas gravy. Right. So, so same. That words. turkey broth um, got made with the, the neck from the bird and, and some bones that came out when it got split right. and uh, some of the sprigs of herbs that were left from the, the brine. brine. Yep. And it all of great. just got cooked up. So I'll get a small pot going here. I'm basically trying to pull all the brown bits off the baking pan here. Okay. I'm just working it with a little water over some heat. It's going to add like the depth of flavor to our gravy. Okay. All right, so we've got that. Got that coming up. And uh, I'm going to add a little bit of this lighter stock that we had from earlier. Okay. We just gotta get so that was about a way. cup that you put in. Yeah, just about a cup. And I think it was probably about a half a cup that I used to like what we call deglaze that pan, get all mm -hmm. the uh, fond up off the bottom of the pan, brown bits. Fond is a French calling. All right. And then I just need to make a little bit of a cornstarch slurry. So the way you do that is just taking, we don't need a lot for, for this amount of. Uh, so that looks like maybe a tablespoon. Yep. 
right? And then you're gonna have literally like very, very small amount of water. If I wanted to, could I use some of that cold stock? You could. Okay. And why do you want to do that with cornstarch? Why do you need to add the water to it? Uh, it'll clump if you just sprinkle it in. It'll just clump up. You need to like hydrate it first. Okay. So you really want like no no thinner than that. Uh -huh. Ideally, it's going to be like you can see it's sort of sticking to the sides. So mm -hmm. it's sort of like half and half. Mm -hmm. Heavy cream would be even a better consistency. You just don't want to dilute your sauce while you're thickening, essentially. That's why you want to dust enough water to bring it together. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Too wide. All right, so before you add slurry to a gravy, you want to make sure that it's boiling. You won't know how thick it is or how thick it's going to get if you add cornstarch first. So you want it to come to a simmer and then you'll see the starch activate right away. You'll be able to tell how thick it's gonna be. You added this corn starch now, you mm -hmm. could do it by a ratio, right? If you had mm -hmm. a recipe, you could just put it all together, whisk it up, mm -hmm. bring it to a simmer and it'll seize up once it hits the simmer. Mm -hmm. But we're not using a recipe. So we wanna do it this way and add it gradually so that we have more control over how thick it gets. Okay, there's a whisk in the drawer right in front of you. I don't necessarily need it. I'm ah. actually just going to use this fork to rinse it off. Okay. And so we're simmering. You can see those bubbles coming up around the edges. What are we looking at here? We're not looking at anything yet. Seeing it's still a little watery. And this is going to be at its thinnest when it's at a simmer. So it will tighten up as it comes down to temp. But when you go to your gravy book and you have that sitting on the table, expect it to thicken. So here's where I like it, okay? It's still coating the spoon, mm -hmm. but it's not running. Okay, can you do that again for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that, okay. All right, and that's really it. I mean, you could have put more herbs in if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Again, like we, the theme of the night seems to be steeping herbs in with whatever we're making. And you it's a good theme. Here too. But I don't know, we'll work with that, right? Okay. All right. Ah, delicious. All right, Very so good. Steph went ahead and got me some serving. For gravy goes in the gravy boat. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Could not be more perfect. Yeah. Good size estimate. Okay. And we've got relish in that beautiful dish. Let's you see the all that gorgeous color. Beautiful. I think we can serve this right in here. That's okay with everybody. Perfectly browned on top. All right. Okay. Uh, are ready over there. So I'm just going to carve my turkey. Okay. So and show us how you do that. Yeah. So <laughs> this was a kosher bird and it is coming right. Did you buy a whole turkey and then take these off? Um, it was a whole breast that I cut oh, into okay. two as best I could. So I have to remove this from the cage. So I'm looking for that right now. If you if you can, I would buy a boneless. This saves you time. Um, but I still have the wing in here too. 
not a bad thing. I tried to figure out how to detach that earlier because I thought I would throw it and stop, stop right. but I couldn't figure out how to get it out. <laughs> yeah, mm. You're, I know you're talking to Seth right now. He had the uh, brine chicken I made. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize kosher birds get salted. So if you did get a kosher bird, it might be a little saltier than you bring it with the ratio that you learned in that brining video. Okay. Pardon my stolen truth right now, I'm sorry. Um, I but, like seeing a chef enjoy his food. Yeah. Uh, I was talking with my mouth full. Um, oh, I'll get a tender one here. So if it were a kosher bird for anyone else, they might want to. They might want to hold back on the salt and the brining. So instead of a tablespoon of salt and a teaspoon of sugar, it might be two teaspoons of salt and yeah, a teaspoon of sugar. Exactly. Mm. And it is that good. This means, oh, so just, just to let everybody know, Alyssa, Alyssa Brightness, according to my uh, specifications. I did. I followed the directions that you gave. did it really well. All right. So. Super easy. Nice sharp knife here. Trying to keep that, if, if possible, for presentation purposes, I'm going to try to keep that skin like sort of on top. It does take a sharp knife to execute this. So if you don't get the skin on, that's okay. It's all about flavor first. You're still going to shingle it nicely on the platter. And no fingers. Right. If you want to use a fork or tongs for this step, you can do that. But Try to shingle this a little bit. When you say shingle, yeah. oh, I see you're you're layering it so that they just yeah. overlap. You can kind of see the cross section. That is beautiful. Look at that. If you sometimes when I do this, I'm gonna do a whole bird later at my mother's. I'll kind of present this, mm -hmm. and then put all the dark meat right here. Beautiful. All right. So that can be beautiful. Go. That's going to go on the table. That looks, I think it looks cool with the negative space. They got a friend in fine dining plating right now. Or actually, it might be so 2016. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So we have any trailer for these? These didn't. This serving dish was never hot. Mm -hmm. I think this should have a trivet. Absolutely. Herb centerpiece, right? That's right. Perfect. Yeah. That is beautiful. What a feast. I'm so hungry now. Definitely going to eat some of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How are we going with current participants? Anybody have any questions? Now's the time. Is everybody able to keep up? Yeah. We got thumbs up. I feel like I would have known if not. So good. The well, thing, it looks like a picture. Oh, good. Perfect. Yeah, well, it's half, uh, half, uh, you know, if you have time to do the nice table setting like Alyssa did, definitely do that. That's my yep. mother's job when I go to do the cooking. She does the presentation. All right. And we're coming back out of the work part of the kitchen. And here's the table.
Well, we wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. We hope you enjoy your feast and we look forward to hearing from you. Bye. Hopefully that went well.